these three players is a direct competitor, yield, mainframe, and the Sweba. Then TVO size, as you can see here. So I only organize the same point and all the organ fits related to these seven gateways. Then if you want to deepen your understanding about my full course strategy, please check out my other video about my full course strategy. Then here's my video link, okay? And then today's notion of finance matching category here, number five, decentralized lending. Also their solution is B2B solutions. Also number one, DAPS, also another matching category too. The notion of finance is a DeFi 2.0 project in the virtual space, okay? Then as usual, I'm going to apply the six Anaka points to stand for the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and a hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30.30. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my how I'm going to analyze each point here, please check out my other video about my Alcoin investment strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then this is my total score for the notion finance as of December 2021. 25.5 points. And from here, I'm gonna tell you the reasons, okay? Then let's start from here, pain point analysis. Then they have made two pain points. And the first one, this one. Decentralized lending has 128 trillion market potential in a global basis. And to help you understand this point, it's kind of a review item, especially to understand about the potential of the blockchain technology. Then thinking about those, you know, huge potential of the blockchain space, we got the great energy from the internet. So before the internet, TV was a major media format. Then there, every single artist who wants to create the contents and they distribute the contents that you decide here, they have to deal with these mutual exploitation player, such as artist productions, TV channel, and advertiser, right? The internet technology made a decent foundation model of this media format, from here to here. The internet media format, as we know, no one stop you to create the contents and then distribute the contents to the user side here. Even like you, like me, also can create the contents and then distribute the contents to the user side here, right? So once we're gonna look at, you know, the once we're gonna look at the one press for the blog, and also Instagram for the picture, also YouTube for the video, you see this here? No mutual exploitation player here, like this one anymore, right? But who's gonna take in care of the proprieties or like a scam contents deal stuff? In this media format, also led by user. For example, like a like button or share button, also reporting functions. These three major features function like filtering mechanism to control the you know, popularity and the quality of the contents, right? That is why it's pretty much more democratic model compared with old fashioned TV media format. Then we want to achieve the completely same things on the existing financial system by using blockchain technology. Then, once we're going to look at the current financial system, we have a lot of mutual exposition player here. So for example, usually we have extra money. We're gonna deposit those extra money to the bank accounts. But here is another user side here. They are looking for the money for buying a new house or buying a car or starting a new business, right? In this case, these users have to deal with these mutual exposition player, such as bankers, venture capitalists, and credit scoring companies. By using blockchain technology, these users here like you, like me, doesn't have any right to directly distribute our assets to these users here. So that is why the blockchain technology wants to achieve the decentralized system here. So just like the internet, there is no mutual exploitation player here, and all asset reallocations from here to here also directly managed by user too. That is why we have a lot of you know, clear application opportunity here. And one of the biggest potential in this application category, of course, banking system. One of the biggest financial system on the existing financial industry. Then of course, the major business of the banking business is lending. So that's why I was, we're gonna look at the many marketplace on the blockchain space, especially we call it DeFi space, huge market growth happening here. December 19, 2017, almost four years ago from now, the total TVL size at that moment is around 10 million USD. That's it. But Almost exactly four years later, 2021, December, as of now, 
So total value rocks asset size hits 46.7 billion as of today, which means for four years, we're going to hit plus 4,670% market growth. It's huge market growth. But the thinking about the market potential of the lending business, it's actually much, much bigger. So this is a potential from the notion of finance pitch deck. So here's market opportunity for the notion of finance. Global debt market is 128 trillion. It's a huge market size. That is why lending business has a pretty big potential. But here's one big issue here. Most of the debt product in the existing global financial market is actually fixed interest rate model. Now, which led to second pay points is this one. Variable interest model on an AVE or compound cannot achieve mass adaptation of the decentralized lending business. So this is also another quotation from the you know, notional finance pitch deck. So once we look at the you know, entire you know, debt market here in the global basis, as I told you, most of the product is a fixed interest model. But once we look at the you know, AVE and compound model here, all these products is a variable interest rate model. Then why you know this variable interest model we can apply on their platform because because of the decentralized feature. So you know on our and compound interest rates created by arguments based one, especially for the supply and the borrow economy for each asset. So if the borrowing demand is pretty much higher than the supply demand, the most API number is goes up. Then once the other size in the borrow APR is going down, these you know deposit asset API also go down. That's why it's variable. But the thinking about you know risk management perspective, you know, especially debt market, fixed interest rate model, it's pretty much common. Think about your real asset run. Once we're gonna think about you know mass adaptation of the rating protocol, especially based on chasm theory, as I told you, of course, these you know innovator and early adapter before the chasm. They are okay to use such kind of, you know, a variable interest rate model. They can take such risk. But the later massive user base here, especially early majority and late majority, they don't accept it. Because all the time they focus on practical benefits with the solutions. So from that perspective, fixed interest rate solution model on a decentralized lending marketplace play a critical role here for the mass adaptation for the decentralized lending business. Okay? Then, based on this understanding, let's move to the next topic, product analysis. So, this is the overview of notional finance. Currently, they're going to provide 11.708% for the lenders in the fixed API model. It's great. Then, currently, they're going to accept these four major assets, USDC, DAI, ETH, and WBTC. Okay? Then, how are they going to manage this fixed API model here? Let me briefly explain about this point. So they call it F-Cash. This is kind of core element of the product. From my perspective, this solution simply say it's kind of bridge currency solution by using synthetic assets to manage this fixed rate lending platform. F-Cash is kind of mutual currency to manage the smart contract on this you know, fixed interest rate decentralized lending model. And to help you understand this point, let me use this slide. So here's lender and borrower. Okay? Then from the lender side, once they're going to decide to join the notional finance, they say they're going to deposit 100 DAI on the notional finance. They're going to make the fixed interest contract. So one year later, let's say December 2021, they're going to get 105 DAI. So one year term, 5% annual interest rates, right? And the notional finance, once they're going to get this you know, 100 DAI here as deposit, they're going to generate synthetic asset of this DAI contract, it's C DAI. Then on the borrower side, those borrowers firstly collateralize their assets in this platform, just like Avid Compound. So they gotta collateralize one ETH on their portfolio. Then they're gonna borrow 100 DAI, right? This one here. So then this, you know, they're gonna follow up this you know, debt contract is 105 DAI, they have to pay back to this you know, finance for the lender in December 2021. So, which means this platform not directly use Ethereum. Instead, they're gonna use this synthetic asset, CDI here, to run these transactions. That is why, of course, they're gonna minimize the gas cost here. Also, we're gonna apply the decentralized model here. Okay? So this is the kind of basic you know, system model here on the platform. Okay? 
Then, as usual, value proportion analysis, then notional finance here. And then their direct competitor is Yield. It's also another early tech startup here, the same category. Then, about the fixed rate and maturity rate, notional finance, and also Yield, same level. But about interest rates for the lender, notional finance is overwhelming Yield. It's a great competitive edge. But also in long term, we have to think about those kind of variety of the collateralized asset, lending asset, DAO. Of course, if this is a major player, I'm the compound, it's overwhelming. But it's okay. Still, their product is early stage, right? But here's one key thing. We have to think about the mass adaptation of the lending platform itself, especially from the notional finance perspective. Of course, in you know, a fixed interest rate lending protocol, it's put a critical role here about you know, mass adaptation of the entire lending platform, right? But from the crypto investor perspective, still, we do not have a lot of opportunity to use notional finance directly. So thinking about the gold market structure perspective, on my analysis, the integration with you know, even farming platform is much more important for them. The reason is, look at here. Good example is Young Finance. Most of their bulk product here, their APY, it's fixed stats here, like, you know, 15%, 70%, all a fixed one. But in the back end side, they're gonna develop the variety of the strategy to achieve this number here. Of course, they're gonna use many protocols such as Arbeno Compound in the back end side. But Arbeno Compound is a variable interest rate. But Wi-Fi provide fixed interest money here. From the retail investor perspective, these fixed interest rates it's pretty much easier for them to decide which yield farming product they want to investment in. Because they can simulate how much investment return they can gain in a certain period of time, right? But in the back end side, still young finance have to deal with these variable interest rate model here. The, from the risk management perspective, for Wi-Fi, this is pretty annoying stuff. Because they have to deal with these, you know, variety of the interest rates, including over quantitation risk. Once notional finance provide fixed rate money here, from the Wi-Fi perspective, it's really, really helpful. From the notional finance perspective, to develop the much more higher APY products, work with those, you know, yield farming platform like Wi-Fi, overwhelming existing you know, product here, they're gonna use Arve or Compound. It's gonna be a great go-to-market strategy to accelerate the mass adaptation on this platform, right? So that's the key things I want you to understand here, to think about the potential of the notion of finance, okay? Next one, team analysis. So here's a key member. So the Teddy, co-founder CEO, he's an ex-head of the trading at the Ayano Capital Crypto Fund. Also, he's an ex-interest rate swap trader at the Barclay Investment Bank, and he got the Master of Economics at the LSE. So he's a professional guy from the interest rate business, you know, in the financial sector. It's great attractions. And Jeff, co-founder CTO, ex-senior program manager at the Spram Blockchain Startups, and also the co-founder of the Omnistat e-commerce for the renewable energy. And he's ex-engineering manager at the Analysis and the Data Science at the Atrasia. Then he got the BA of the Mathematics at the Claremont McKenna College. So he's also the right guy to develop this product here, because he's pretty good at the mathematics here, data and science stuff, it's the right guy. They plus 10 member, many in the US. So it's pretty early stake startups, but the right team formations, it's great. Then number four, execution plan analysis. This is another quotation from their investor pitch. The notion of finance here, these three player is a direct, direct competitor, yield, mainframe, and the slave. Then TBO size, as you can see here, almost four times bigger than yield, it's great. Also their total loan size hit 5.7 million, but yield hit 470K. Notional also achieved 10 times bigger than yield for their total loan size still, amazing interactions. Then thinking about another competitive edge for the execution capability, supply side economy, because it's a lending business. So all the time we have to think about supply side economy. Then I assume that by leveraging Teddy's you know, network, they're gonna already partner with these liquidity partner, professional crypto funds. They're gonna provide those crypto assets for the borrower in this market. This is also another you know, great traction to scale up their platform 
in its early stage. It's great. Then number five, token economy analysis. So here's token economy design metrics which I made and a major match in category of notion of finance. Of course, number five, decentralized lending, also DAPs, especially B2B applications. Okay. Then here's the network effect model of the note. So since still it's very early stage, so some of the key elements is a still hypothetical one, especially with this red mark area here. Okay. The starting point this one. In farming products, which wants to minimize the risk of variable interest rates on the product debt and operations. This is the end of first class targets. They are gain more borrower demands, especially for the yield farming products. Liquidity provider more allocate their assets in this platform, so more TVL by lenders. They have more choice for the collateralized and ready assets. That is why they can achieve better customer experiences. So this is a first growth mechanism. TVL growth on liquidity on this lending platform. Then by leveraging this growth engine here, second step is this one. No asset growth, also the DAO growth. Then this red mark area here played a critical role. No staking incentives, not only for the voting, but also the LP reward, also no buyback program. They are planning to start you know, this feature from since quarter one in 2022. Once they implement this feature here on the token economy, they can achieve less known supply on exchange. So Less no selling pressure on exchange, so for the node investor, they're gonna see much more better customer experiences. Then I think this is one of the ideal network effect model for the node token economy. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay. Then it's one big track analysis as of December 2021. So current market cap on the node is only five million, still pretty early stage. Okay. Then one of the benchmark targets, of course, you know, are there currently three million. But for the other notional finance, try to build the collaborate together or coexist together on this decentralized lending marketplace, okay? But you know, there are other benchmark for both of them, notional finance, are they? Of course, JP Morgan, 464 billions. It's pretty big. But thinking about the you know, fixed rate model for the broad developments, notional finance might have a bigger potential than Aave to meet this benchmark target, JP Morgan. That's why, to me, it's pretty big potential. Then to achieve this target, of course, yield farming integrations and note staking will be the key point, especially for the gold market strategy. Okay. Then about governance now, it's still pretty early stage, but all the time they are focused on to take the voting approach to decide which crypto assets they are planning to add for the next stage. So from the initial stage, you know, DAO governance development perspective, I think it's good. Okay. Then number six, have second analysis. So, as usual, Gartner Hype Circle Analysis, Ross Integrity 2021 versions, and a major matching Kyrie with the notion of finance, starting from the DeFi and also the DApps, as I told you. Then, since they're going to apply FCash model, it's kind of a unique smart contract model on their platform business. So, another matching Kyrie is smart contracts. Okay? Then, of course, we, as we know, DeFi and DApps all the time pretty popular you know, on the hot item on the blockchain space. So it's pretty good for them to get the stronger market momentum, as always. Okay. The final item, total swap bids. So about pain points, we have any questions, 5.0. To reach mass adaptation for the decentralized lending protocol, fixed interest model is a critical demand. Thinking about the existing debt market, so 5.0. Product level, 4.0. It's great technology, including the smart contract model, FCash, it's great technology. Since the variety of the choice, for the, you know, collateralized and the lending assets, still only four, so it's pretty early stage, so 4.0. Team level, 4.0. Both co-founding player, it's a pretty professional team, but still the team size is 10, it's pretty early stage, so they need to scale up more in the long term, so currently 4.0. Execution power, 4.0. This market, it says, is pretty early stage, but their trash level compared with you know, other direct competitors such as yield is amazing, so 4.0. Token economy 4.5. Once they're gonna release you know, their buyback program in a quarter one, 2022, they're gonna realize the differential economy effects on the token economy. It's a great community edge. Thinking about the success of the Young Finance buyback program or ERP 1559. So, from that perspective, their token economy still early stage, but from my perspective, it's well mature one, so 4.5. Hype cycle 4.0. DeFi and the DApps, all the time they're gonna get the pretty strong market momentum. Of course, they're weaker than Metaverse, but 
still relatively stronger market momentum on this popular item on hype cycle, so 4.0. So the total score is 25.5 points. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm going to recommend investment in notional finance talk, not. Okay? And if you have any kind of questions with this video, please think about to join my premium membership program, live q sessions. Then every week, I'm going to hold a live q sessions with my member. And then there, I can answer you any kind of questions related to this video or any other video that I make. Then, of course, I'm your busy. So you can post your question in advance. And then during the live q sessions, I can answer your questions. Then later, you can check out my recorded video. Then for more detail, please check out my other video. And here's my video link. Okay? Alright, so that is all this time. So I'm going to make this video for an educational purpose. So I'm not going to guarantee you any kind of certain level of investment outcome with this video or any other video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will probably help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and water space. So I'm going to make lots of interesting videos on crypto and water space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.